Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Interview. I am here joined by Ms. Yoon Sung Min, the Marketing Director of Panoni, and Stella Kung, the Chief Advisor of Panoni. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> so, starting off, would you care to give a brief introduction about yourselves and your role at Panoni? Sure. Um, hello, I'm Sung Min Yoon, Marketing Director for Panoni in Korea. So, I'm doing all the marketing coming into Seoul from all the foreign projects request for Panoni. Mm -hmm. And you, Stella? Uh, yeah, uh, so I'm Stella. I'm the CM of Qten, but still like I'm the chief advisor for Panoli. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, that I bring to Panoli, it's about we can give more like um, st strategy and also the vision about the business itself, and also give some resource and some uh, visions about the blockchain media and blockchain PR agency. Mm -hmm. Now I know you're the chief advisor, but uh, could you care to would you care to elaborate on the history behind Panoni then? Oh yeah, so actually, uh, so the Panoni founder and CEO is called Alisa Tsai, mm -hmm. and actually she's my uh, she's my old friend like before okay. blockchain, but she's like um, she's come from she came from a really like traditional like uh, PR agency and consulting firm. Mm -hmm. And also the other co-founder called the Tong Tong. Mm -hmm. She's the mainstream journalist before in China. And also she like starting and also follow like blockchain for over three years now. Penalty, I think it start like from uh, March 2017. Mm -hmm. And so now it's already like almost one year. It's one year already, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this question is for you, Song Min. So uh, the services provided by Panoni when mm -hmm. it comes to business PR and marketing divides into three categories from what I know. So first one is startups, helping startups. Mm -hmm. Second one is VC funding. And the third one is exchanges or financial services. So would you care to give a bit more elaborate explanation behind the services provided by Panoni? Yeah, so we provide from A to Z every service from uh, strategy consulting to marketing and community management and all the content marketing. Mm -hmm. So uh, Panoni actually uh, is a center of all the brain team members from all the traditional industry companies and mm -hmm. blockchain experts came together into mm -hmm. Panoni and we that's why we can give uh, strategy consulting to the projects or VCs funds mm -hmm. and exchanges too. So after we check their projects possibility and do due diligence then we can go on to go with the, the team and then we check what they need for each targeting market, China, mm -hmm. Korea or the US. Mm -hmm. So after uh, deciding the strategy and marketing timeline and all the branding and then we can uh, talk about uh, detailed <laughs> content mm -hmm. and PR mm -hmm. and IR okay. <laughs> and to the community. So now the technology of blockchain revolves around the concept of decentralization. However, if you think about it, the traditional corporate industry is more tended towards the concept of centralization. Mm -hmm. So when comparing with the traditional industry or corporate industry, what's the difference between a blockchain project business pr procedure and a traditional company's business procedure? So I think the, the, big, the biggest difference between a traditional you know, traditional company and blockchain company. Now it's about, uh, I think when a traditional company they're trying to raise money from public, it means like go really go listed on any like really stock exchange, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, they already get all the product ready mm -hmm. and they already can show people what's about that. So mostly they raise money from private round. Mm -hmm. So it's a more, uh, you know, uh, in, in, institution like investors. But for blockchain, think about it. It's uh, just a original way how you raise money from the individual at the beginning. So which means even that like, those of the project only have POC at the very beginning, and then they just raise money from the public with the POC. Mm -hmm. So that which means the community is really Im important for them because those are their investors. Mm -hmm. And why are you gonna need to spend more time to educate them? Because those people, they are not qualified investor as we just mentioned about stock market, right? right? So yeah, that's a really big difference with that. And so I think that's also why the traditional people would think like, 
how come the blockchain company they just say you know like they several times of like yeah. go so fast that we have to maybe spend like five years then we get there so i would i would say this is not there, there's a difference big difference but still there's some you know the uh, common sense that people can really that's why we panel here mm -hmm. they trying to become the bridge to connect those two different like uh, uh the kind of we say like industry so Songmin, you're you're based in korea right mm -hmm. so and you would be managing the korean community of panoni right sure. so what's the struggle that you face when it comes to managing communities in korea because that is something that the traditional industry doesn't really focus that much attention on but then when you think about blockchain you really do have to take uh, the community as a huge effect and when it comes to business procedures yeah so when it comes to the community we always uh, our, the struggle I faced with once was uh, explaining the blockchain technology in detail and attracting those community people about the projects well. Mm -hmm. So usually, generally, people uh, doesn't really look out for the details of blockchain technology, but uh, their only interest is normally on price. Mm -hmm. But as a manager for the communities, for our client projects, uh, I've been trying hard to uh, move their attention, not only to the price itself and chart, but to the blockchain technology and the values and the visions mm -hmm. and the team members and mm -hmm. that they are really trying hard to deliver to the community. Mm. I yeah. think Songmin answered a little bit of a question that I was going to ask next to the question that I just asked you. But then uh, when, when you guys are providing consulting services, mm -hmm. what's the most, uh, what's your priority? What do you guys tend to put your eyes on the most? Because there could be like business model, there could be a ecosystem or their uh, community base maybe. What's your priority? We will just say, we will start from two parts. One thing it's a technology. Mm -hmm. And either you don't have like quite sexy business model or like, <laughs> you know, like, or the eco to token ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I think that's the part that we can help with, you know, because we are not tech guys. We can't really help you with the, with the all this like the coding or, you know, make to create a product for you guys. But that's the thing that we can do. So one thing, if we check the technology wise, it's really good and we will, we will look forward to like you know cooperate together mm -hmm. the second thing about like if regarding about the business i mean strong business development uh this is the thing we work also care about because i like, but the condition is like you gonna have to you gonna make sure those gonna be a complete like, product that you can make mm -hmm. so and then we'll combine this and we will help with like this part because like you know for blockchain the apps right now is a deck of all this use case. So with the business development, which means it's like, you know, come from like, they already have the product that run by few years, or even they have the users like, you know, database already. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to bring blockchain to the, you know, uh, you know, the majority society people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, now, you guys are here in Korea, right? So uh, this could be a personal question. If you guys feel uncomfortable answering this, you don't have to answer it. But then, uh, since you guys are looking into the Korean market, I'm pretty sure you both have your own taste when it comes to the projects that you guys like. Yeah. So do you have any projects in mind that you guys are in personally interested in? Yeah, so there are so many projects in Korea. Uh, so I've been meeting uh, not only foreign projects, but also Korean projects. But these days, the projects I'm uh, personally focusing on are the projects that are developing their product and focusing on the focusing on keeping promise to the community and their investors. Mm -hmm. So if there's no use cases for the blockchain, or if there was no uh, need for using the blockchain technology, I don't think it's a good project. And even we, even some people asking, what is the good blockchain projects? I mean, there has been no standards for being a good blockchain projects mm -hmm. uh, since until now there have been no actual use cases to end users. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, 
uh, not only uh, keeping uh, defending the price of the cryptocurrency, but also I think should they uh, focus on the developing product and mm -hmm. making use cases mm -hmm. and making it more understandable to uh, people. Mm -hmm. So Stella, do you have a personal favorite Korean project? So actually, now I'm really interested in Kakao Wallet. Oh, okay, the Clayton, right? Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, it's because as I'm saying, it's it can bring the massive like users mm -hmm. for blockchain, even right. just only cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I interesting. <laughs> and the second thing is about I would give a suggestion about uh because like now I see that mostly the projects from Korea is more like um, uh, D apps mm -hmm. or it, the public chain. I won't say it's a like, really going well mm -hmm. but i would suggest like more fo can focus on more like kind of security parts like project maybe that we're like interested that we'll be interested in because mm -hmm. like uh as i'm saying if you are not cacao i don't think and now you can have <laughs> so many like adoptions uh, or users that you can have for a d app so Already, it's like been the game already going on for over one year, so nothing interesting. So I would suggest that like, I'm also looking for there more and more like security or like us, uh, you know, like their two solution projects that can come out from Korea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So switching gears to PAN News, which is another division from Panoni Group. Now, how is the team of Pan PAN News formed? Because it's a media company, right? So, and uh, what region is this media outlet uh, working in currently? PA News is headquartered in Shanghai and it currently provides English, Chinese and Korean, English, Korean language. Mm -hmm. So for uh, the PA News team, they are a content team and also PA data team. So our chief editor is actually from the uh, government operated media in China. So she's really experienced in traditional media and mm -hmm. also blockchain media. So she's in charge of a managing content team and PA data team. So a content team is uh, making original content, reporting all the pioneers in blockchain and cryptocurrency industry. Mm -hmm. And also PA data is doing research on the Chinese and US and Korean market insights to make a, a regular report to the leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, as the chief advisor of Benoni Group, uh, what would you say that the PAN News, what, what, what's the, the sharp weapon that PAN News has that can uh, win over other competitors out there in the current market when it comes to blockchain media? So, as, as, I, as my understanding, actually after I've seen so many like, different medias like from blockchain industry, I think they more focus on the PR release, so which means just PR release, you know, like sponsored articles, sponsor, right? Sponsor, you know, some events. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think that's the thing that I, I'm not saying it's like there's no value for them, but I would say like it's definitely not the long term, like, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that information or something that other like company or children company they will like look into because. Um, what they need is a uh, more kind of insights about like all the technology itself and also the whole like industry that you know how's it gonna go and what's the process of the blockchain industry right now mm -hmm. so uh, I think that that's why I really like uh, like PN News is about one thing I think they write all this kind of even the report the PR release it's more from a natural role mm -hmm. to to just uh, report all this kind of information and analyze the blockchain company or either some like traditional company give their insights about what they see of blockchain. There is a lot of blockchain related media uh, coming up in our uh, the, in the blockchain ecosystem. However, uh, due to the stigma of scams or hacks or uh, price hypes or something else, uh, the, the public opinion when it comes to blockchain is not that good, which blocks the public from coming into mm. or taking attention, uh, putting attention to blockchain media itself. So uh, what would be the ideal direction that blockchain media should go to, strive towards to, to overcome the stigma that is put upon them currently? 
So blockchain media, uh, there, I've been talking with many journalists and editors from media mm -hmm. uh, over the world. Since last year, there has been a boom of price and fluctuation of the price and so many news on the press. So we've been trying hard to uh, reduce those stigma and fight out with those bad uh, bad feedbacks mm -hmm. on the media and on the community people and we our team is trying hard to uh, focus on the quality of the content itself mm -hmm. and after due diligence and research and data we only uh, take those fact-checked articles onto media itself. So I think all the media should go to not only focusing on price or hypes or not checked articles, news, but should check again all the sources and then uh, and then talk mm -hmm. to the audience of the media. Mm -hmm. Now I think you would have something to add to this, Stella. I can tell. <laughs> um, so I think I would suggest all the journalists like go to study blockchain first. Mm -hmm. You're gonna know the technology itself first, then you you will have the ability to analyze what the project is good or not. Mm -hmm. The second thing is about I think all the media need to be more, uh, you know, get together, stick together because uh, it's now it's hard for like if like for example because the blockchain is like borderless, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are from Korea, I think for those Korean media, it's like they have to spend time on learning stuff mm -hmm. and I don't think they have like enough like resource to do the fact check. Mm -hmm. So if like you get, you know, stick together with other like different like markets, media, I think, uh, you know, it's like kind of save time and also it's kind of like uh, be more responsible for all this like industry. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's two things I, I want to emphasize for those media because I, uh, it's kind of hard to really talk with the media. Mm -hmm. uh, either not just only from us uh, PR person, I gotta be careful about what, we, what I say. Mm -hmm. It's like, I find out I even don't have to care about that. It's the things that I find out even I really can't talk with them. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if your knowledge is too narrow, I think it's going to also limit your ability as well. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Now, uh, finishing up on the interview, uh, would you care to leave, leave your last comment to our Korean viewers or to the PAN community or the general Korean blockchain ecosystem? Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I'm really glad that I have the chance to uh, go into Korean blockchain like two years ago. And until now, I think um, it's like everybody that maybe we can start study together and move and make the Korean blockchain community like getting you know more forward than and go further uh, compared with all of the uh, all the community from all over the world. Yeah. Oh, 2017년 3월에 이제 이더리움 이 3만 원일 때 처음 블록체인 업계에 들어와서 그냥 단순히 투자자나 트레이더로서 어, 거래만 하다가 이제 개인적으로 블록체인 기술이 이곳에 적용된다는 것을 알고서 거래소에서 일을 했었는데요. 지금 거래소에서 일하거나 엑셀러레이터로 일하면서 항상 마주치는 많은 분들이 이 블록체인 프로젝트, 이팀 진짜 믿을 수 있나요? 아니면 제가 신뢰할 수 있나요? 어떻게 보증하시죠? 어떻게 스캠이 아닌 거죠? 어떻게 체크하나요? 항상 그런 많은 질문들을 받습니다. 하지만 거래소에 있을 때나 이제 판원이에서 지금 근무하면서 지금 저의 역할 항상 해외 프로젝트든 국내 프로젝트든 실제로 프로젝트 팀을 얼마나 신뢰할 수 있고 이 기술이 얼마나 필요해서 활용할 수 있는지를 체크하는 게 저희의 일이기 때문에 항상 여, 여러분들에게 신뢰를 드리기 위해서 노력하고 있으니까요. 신뢰할 수 없다면 저희 PA 뉴스 한번 아티클 한번 확인해 보시고요. 한 번씩 리포트도 보시고 어, 조금 더 신뢰를 드릴 수 있기 위해서 항상 노력하는 판원이 되겠습니다. 감사합니다. <웃음> That was a wonderful comment. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Ms. Yoon Sung Min, the marketing director of Panoni, and Stella Kung, the chief advisor of Panoni. Thank you for watching.